All right, everybody, attempt number two. Um, I did try filming this earlier. Uh, I actually got through like an entire half hour of uh, footage that I recorded, and unfortunately it turned out that the audio was so garbled I couldn't actually use any of it, which is a little disappointing because during the course of the review I actually found out something about the toy I was reviewing um, that I didn't know before, and it was really nice to you know get that realization on camera, and then nothing, couldn't use it, so whatever. Attempt number two, here we go. How's it going, everybody? It's the new Sam. I'm back. I'm in front of a camera. It's, uh, you know, sort of a long time coming, I guess, maybe. Um, and you might be wondering, why am I in front of the camera? Well, um, if anybody remembers back in my review of the Skull Magnum from Kamen Rider Double, I did mention that uh, if it was a small roleplay toy that wasn't like a belt or anything else like that, um, if possible, I would review it face to screen or face to lens, I guess. Uh, hopefully it's like kind of like face to face with you guys. Um, just, you know, get a little bit more emotion, a little more of this instead of just, you know, dry showing you a thing and talking about it. Today I'm coming at you to uh, to review a roleplay toy, and it's uh, sort of timely, I guess, because because uh, the show is on now, and it's uh, on its about second episode, I think. I think yeah, second episode. So today we're going to take a look at the legendary morpher from Power Rangers Super Mega Force. The legendary morpher, as one would guess, is the. Uh, Power Rangers equivalent of the Mobirates from Kaiser Sentai Go Kaiger. Uh, as such, a lot of the details are still the same, uh, with a few notable exceptions. Um, unfortunately, I don't actually own a Mobirates, so I can't do a direct comparison, but uh, from my experience with them, I know first off that uh, this is a lot smaller, um, as Power Rangers toys tend to be when compared to their Sentai counterparts. Um, also on like the uh, the front screen here, I guess you'd call it, uh, the word Gokaiger was removed, the logo was made a little bigger to fill more space. Um, this, which was a speaker grill on the Mobirates, is clearly not in this case. Uh, this whole section doesn't extend nearly as far because that's the kind of tumbler where you put the key in and turn it, and it's, it, yeah, doesn't actually have a thing. Um, this silver detailing here and here was not present uh, on the actual toy. I had to add that myself to make it more uh, accurate. And the biggest difference, which you can start to see right about here, where it's a lot thinner than it ought to be, is right there. Whereas on the Mobirates and on the Morphers in the show, this would look like just two swords uh, concealing this little top of key skull head thing. Um, there'd be four panels, one, two, three, and four, which would rotate in and out and uh, conceal the whole thing. And then when you opened it up, it would reveal the logo. Uh, in this case, it's just a couple little panels that hide in behind here. Um, other than that, a lot of the detailing on the inside is all still the same, but also the keypad is just one sort of D-pad shaped button as opposed to an actual functioning keypad. So, entering any uh, codes like you would on the Mobirates is also kind of a no-go on this. Still, it is a pretty nice representation of what you see on screen, and it's a lot less clunky, like I said, which means it's a little uh, easier to wield if you're one of those people who likes to pretend like it's a real cell phone. Now, the Legendary Morpher came with two Ranger keys and one demo key. The demo key is just used for, um, you know, the Try Me feature while it's still in the package. And these are what make the Legendary Morpher make its sounds when the electronics are turned on. But to turn the electronics on, there's a little switch right back here, and all you do is you flick that on, and you're treated to a barely audible activation noise, and the LED right in here starts blinking. Like that. The activation sound isn't the only quiet one, as pressing the keypad also... barely audible uh, beeping noises there. Inserting any key, we'll just use the demo one for right now, into the, uh, into the morpher actually makes all of the sounds louder. And you can now hear the keypad being pressed, and in fact, even when you switch it on uh, with a key inside, you get the activation sound just a lot louder. Uh, presumably there's some switch in here that this kind of 
contacts and uh, and allows the volume to get a little louder. So to activate the sounds of the legendary morpher, you're going to need the ranger keys. And the legendary morpher did come with two of them. It came with the super mega force red ranger key, and it also came with the mighty morphin red ranger key. Now the ranger keys are pretty cool. Um, these are also, again, a lot smaller than the Japanese versions, which I don't have any of those either. I'm going to get some eventually. Um, Paint-wise, sculpt-wise, they're pretty cool. If a little squat compared to what I'm used to seeing, and anyone who watches the show would indeed also be used to seeing. Uh, transformation to key mode for them is pretty simple. You lift the arms up, and then this piece here is actually spring-loaded on these, unlike the uh, Japanese keys. So you just click it up like that, and uh, and you're ready to go. They feature a, a logo on the back that's uh, encased in what looks like some kind of little QR code. It's for the uh, the Ranger Key Scanner app for uh, for phones. Once you got a Ranger Key ready to go, insert it into here, turn it to activate the sounds. Now, except for the voice of uh, Gose from Power Rangers Megaforce announcing the uh, the team name and the color in this particular case, uh, the rest of those sounds are all actually lifted straight from the Mobirates, so that's pretty cool that it uh, maintains the sounds from the Japanese release. Uh, as well, turning a key to switch it off is also a uh, carryover from the Mobirates. Uh, now, because you can't input any codes on here, uh, the code to summon the uh, the pirate ship obviously doesn't work, so they factored it in as a secondary feature for turning the keys. Switch it again. Summon starship. And you get the summoning of their sky ship so that they can start to form their megasword. So that's pretty cool. Moving on to the Mighty Morphin Red Ranger. Again, logo on the back. It's the... Uh, tribal dinosaur coin or just the the I think it's the dinosaur coin dinosaur coin they had for the uh, for the megazord again in a little scanning code now with any team that isn't super mega force it doesn't announce the color and just gives you a generic uh, transformation sound instead of the very unique um, Gokaiger slash Super Mega Force transformation noise. Uh, and for a lot of the teams, a second turn of the key will result in this. Now I gotta think, where have I heard that before? Oh uh, yeah. Of course, that's the communicator sound from the original Power Rangers. However, not just the original Power Rangers keys make the noise. Um, I know of at least a couple others that do it. Um, maybe even more. Finally, we've got the demo key. Like I said, this is the one that was used for just the uh, Try Me feature. And turning that on, you get a super mega force sound without calling out a color. And every time you every time you turn it, you'll just get that sound. All right. Now it is possible to just by tweaking this around a bit, make it make other noises. I'm not going to go through them right now because it takes a lot of effort to just kind of wiggle it around and get it to work, uh, get it to work right. But I've got it to do Super Mega Force Green, uh, Time Force Turbo Exclusive. Um, I think I've even gotten it to do uh, Super Mega Force Red, but then again, I've already got a key for that, so I, I don't really care. Um, there's probably some others that I think I got it to do Lightspeed Rescue, maybe. So tweaking around with this thing can make it make different noises, but I'm really not going to mess with it right now. So straight out of the package, that's pretty much what you get. But because this is the first video that I've done in a while, I am going to add a little more to it, let's just say. So to expand on the play value of the Legendary Morpher, let's take a look at my current um, guilty pleasure uh, collecting addiction. Ranger Keys! So the Ranger Keys come in packs of three, and I've got three packs of them for you know a total of nine keys for anyone who's any good at basic math. The first one I got 
the Super Mega Force key pack, which comes with the green, blue, and red Super Mega Force Ranger keys. Uh, red, obviously, I already had as well because he did come with the Morpher. This one is a bit different, though, and I'll go over that in a minute. I also got the Power Rangers Samurai key set, which is, again, red, blue, and green. Also, I've picked up the Mega Force Ranger key pack, which is red, blue, and black, as black does not, as, as there is no green to, you know, I mean, he becomes green, but that's another thing entirely. The Mega Force keys are a bit of an oddity to me, at least in the sense of uh, Power Rangers, because uh, in Japan it makes sense because Go Sager and Go Kaiger are completely different teams, therefore, if Go Kaiger wants to use the Go Sager abilities, all is well and good. Uh, in Super Mega Force, however, this guy and this guy are the same guy. Right? Mega Force Red becomes Super Mega Force Red as an upgrade. So having a key to turn yourself into your previous form seems a little redundant. I mean, I suppose you could make an argument that, uh, say, um, the guy who's normally Mega Force Blue can use the Mega Force Red key and suddenly become his buddy, the fucking Mega Force Red Ranger. But again, it doesn't really help because. We're only two episodes in, but they've already well established that their original Megaforce powers are just not enough to stop this space armada they're facing. That's why they have these, so that they can power up beyond this. So having keys of them just makes no sense at all, uh, especially considering the fact that if they so desired to become these forms again, rather than throw a key into their morpher and, and have that all happen, they could really just cancel their super mega mode and just go back to normal. But, uh, you know, whatever. It's, it's, it's cool. Uh, at least there's more keys for me to uh, throw up on a shelf somewhere. Uh, still, not a lot of color diversity between them. I've got a bunch of reds, a bunch of blues, a couple of greens, and now one black. Um, I'm hoping that uh, sometime down the line they'll start to, start to release packs with uh, pinks and yellows in them, maybe even like uh, sixth rangers. Like I'm hoping a second Super Mega Force pack will be pink, yellow, silver. Uh, similarly, a second uh, uh, Mighty Morphin pack will be pink, yellow, and uh, and green. Right. Anyway, so uh, let's take a look at some of these. First off, as I said, I was going to point out, there is a difference between the Ranger Keys released in the key packs and the Ranger Keys released with the other toys. This is the Red Ranger Key that came with the Morpher, this is the one from the pack. Um, as you can see, this is pretty stiff plastic for the head and, and, uh, and arms of, the, of what I'm going to call the Deluxe Key. Whereas the Ranger Key pack one is done in sort of a, a rubbery plastic. Uh, also, the colors are flatter, where this one's got some metallic flake uh, in the plastic itself. Uh, I took some pictures and put them up on uh, on the channel's Facebook page, so anyone who wants to check that out for uh, a little bit better comparison uh, can do so. Also, the uh, chest details are a little different. This one's actually a little worn because I've flicked this one up so many more times. But um, the paint job is a little different, and indeed, in key mode, you can see that uh, this one has a smaller logo than this one, and also uh, a shinier sort of silvery plastic versus a much duller grayer plastic. As you can sort of see them side by side there. In this light, it's not too noticeable, but it is there. So having already gone through the Super Mega Force red key, let's just continue on with the team. Super Mega Force blue. So you get the Super Mega Force Blue, as well as the uh, same transformation noise, and to summon his Zord, a second sw a second turn on the key. Super Mega Jet. Summons the Super Mega Jet, the Blue Ranger's uh, personal Zord for the series. Green, again being Super Mega Force, it will call out his color. And we're met with the same transformation noise. Another turn on this, and it'll summon his Zord. Super Mega Racer. The Super Mega Racer. Now, the other sets aren't as exciting, because unfortunately, each member of the team makes the same sound. Uh, take, for instance, the Samurai Keys. Here's the Samurai Red. Take note of the uh, shape of the key. And the Samurai Blue. 
again, same shape. So these guys will make the exact same sounds in the morpher, but let's just show off one just for fun here. So again, you get the team name as well as the uh, generic transformation sound, and when you turn it off, turn it back on, you again get the communicator noise. Moving on now to Megaforce, as previously, they have the same key structures, so they will make the same noises in there. Two things that I found out that were interesting about the Megaforce keys, though, is uh, one, They use the same transformation sound as the Super Mega Force keys instead of the generic ones from the uh, other teams. Um, and two, they only make the one sound. The fun part comes when you use a Mega Force key and then use a Super Mega Force key as this is what I found out while I was messing around with these during my initial shoot of this review. You get your same old thing, your same old transformation noise, and then... You get a bit of the theme song, which that was kind of cool. I had read online that there was ways to unlock the theme song in this thing. However, a lot of a lot of reports said that you needed like all six red through silver Super Mega Force keys all put in to make it work. Um, but apparently, it's yeah, it's just as simple as throwing in a Mega Force key than throwing in a Super Mega Force key. So that's kind of cool. All right, so this has been my look at uh, the legendary Morpher and all of the various odds and ends that I have that go with it. Um, all in all, I'm pretty pleased with it. I mean, it doesn't have all of the functions of a Mo Biretz, but uh, at the same time, I don't really need it to. Uh, I've become sort of addicted to these Ranger keys. There's just something about having mitfuls of little dudes that turn into keys. I don't know, it's really cool. Um, as the, uh, as the toy line progresses, I'm looking forward to more, maybe, diversity in the Ranger keys. As I, uh, as I collect more of this, maybe some of the Zord Builder stuff that comes with, uh, comes with keys, uh, maybe some of the other key packs when they come out, uh, I'll probably just build a bunch up and then do, like, another video just showing off all the other different keys, or maybe just do them as an addendum to the, uh, review of whatever they come with. Um, so yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, I'm looking forward to more Super Mega Force stuff. Uh, hope you guys are too, and uh, we'll see you next time.